So thank you everybody for being here. Um, I apologize for the contrast on the slides. I hope everybody can see fine. You, you may think there's obviously a trick to the question because we all know Drupal can do everything. So the session is more about the struggle to sometimes try to do something that Drupal is not really uh, built to do or how we can try to bend Drupal to what we want to do. So I, I'm Simon George. I've been doing Drupal for 15, 16 years now. Uh, I'm a Drupal developer and I work for Machina Corpus. So if you know the name, it's because uh, we are sponsoring these beautiful Eco Cups uh, for the DrupalCon. Uh, Machina Corpus is a small French company. We do exclusively open source projects and uh, we are using free software, so mainly Drupal for CMS, but we do Python as well, mainly Django, and we do a lot of open source web mapping. Um, what I would like to know is how many people in the room are developers or project managers that have already been using Drupal to, uh, to create websites? Raise your hand. Okay, so most of the room. Um, how many people in the room are more clients or people that plan to use Drupal for their next website? Okay, so <laughs> one person, thanks. Um, so basically, if you're a Drupal developer and uh, yesterday you went to some buffs or some sessions about Layout Builder, it's totally possible that you won't learn anything in this session. So if you are thinking uh, or if you are hesitating between this one or another session, I would encourage you to go elsewhere because it's possible that uh, at the end of the talk you will have learned nothing. <laughs> okay, so I'm happy to have everyone stay there. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so the, the premise of the title is um, from CMS to Page Builder, so uh, I would like to start by trying to define how I see a CMS or how I see a Page Builder and um, why I think there's a difference. And so in my mind, a CMS is something where you write something once and you reuse the same content everywhere on the website. So it's mainly built of a, uh, on a content model and how you can reuse it everywhere. While, uh, so obviously Drupal is a really good CMS from this point of view. And what I think or what I see in a page builder is something where you customize every bit of content and when you try to have more of a design approach where you think of your page um, not in the context of a whole website or of a whole content model but you try to design uh, each page the best, so more of a landing page approach or something like that. And in my mind, at least right now, Drupal may not be the best tool for that. Um, you may have seen in the keynote yesterday that uh, we are trying to work uh, on that and uh, we are hoping that in the future Drupal can be better. But right now, I would say that it's totally possible that there are better tools to create uh, pages or to, to try to build pages with a design approach in mind. So I, I will start by giving you a little bit of context. I currently work uh, for a fairly well-known uh, airplane manufacturer. Uh, we, are, we are working on a web factory, so lots of websites. And the thing is that we are migrating from Adobe Experience Manager where the, the content editor in Airbus we are used to create pages and to add some components in the pages and to override almost anything. So with each page they were designing, they could override the title, override the picture, and so they, they have no reflex uh, in thinking as a content model because every piece of content, when they reuse it, they can override everything. Um, so we needed to migrate that in Drupal and the, um, the first team that built the website was not from a Drupal background, so they have no idea how we, can, how we could use Drupal the best. And basically, they were just approaching the website uh, with the idea that Drupal is just another tool and we will just reproduce what we know, but in Drupal. And so, um, I, what I... When I started to create the session, uh, I had in mind something where I would try to um, illustrate the story and try to give you some advice for your next project. So as you are all developers and are used to work with Drupal, it's totally possible that 
all these advices, you know them already. Uh, but uh, I hope if I can change some of your minds, uh, it will all be worth it. So the first thing I would like to do is say that um, you need to hire Drupal specialists because Drupal is a product and I work with a lot of good PHP developers that were not Drupal specialists and it's not something you can learn in one month or something like that. You need to have work with Drupal, work with the community modules, learn how to best utilize what Drupal can do. And so um, I guess, uh, you all think that since you all are using Drupal to develop, but I feel it's really important to communicate to a client that Drupal is not a, a generic PHP product and you need to work with people that know Drupal. And I think um, another thing that even in big projects is sometimes a little bit forgotten is you need to train your clients. So. Um, Obviously, that was not done on that project because I came to the project later, but when I, what I tried to do on, uh, on a very big project, so uh, I mean this project has been ongoing for three years now, is to try to train the clients so that they know Drupal and it's easier then to discuss about Drupal issues because they understand a bit how it works, how the content type works, what's the view, what's the taxonomy, and uh, I feel uh, then our discussion has, are better because at least the client has at least a vague idea of uh, why we are doing that or why we are proposing uh, some solution uh, better than others. So, and I feel that, uh, even today, um, we are approaching project by thinking we are the experts and we will build the, the website even if the client, uh, the client doesn't really need to know what Drupal do. And I, I think what Drupal does, and I think it's a mistake, you need to train your clients so that they understand a little bit better about Drupal. So um, obviously when the project started, uh, we just said yes to everything the business wanted. So we, we tried to recreate, or they tried to recreate um, how the website worked. And so basically they tried to create a page builder when, uh, when you were reusing content, so when you were using uh, entity reference or thing like that, you always had the possibility to override the title, override the picture, override the description, override every field. And so there, also it's built upon a, some kind of content model. Um, when you look at the database, basically there are uh, data that is copied everywhere with every content um, having at least several occurrences with different title, different picture, all depending on where it is included in the website. So basically, um, the, when, we, uh, when we got the website uh, two years ago, there were two content types. One, I would say usual Drupal content type, which was the news, so you had uh, very structured content type uh, and something that we are all used to work with. And then there was a flexible page. So basically a layout builder where you could put every block, every component on the website and you could build whatever page you were dreaming of. And the client was quite happy with that at first. So the, because they were able to create every pages they wanted. But the thing is that uh, as we are on a web factory with a lot of websites, a lot of different clients and a lot of different needs, um, something happened after a few years. And um, so the message here is as a developer, you need to say no to your clients sometimes because they don't have, uh, sometimes they have good idea about the, what they want for their business, but they don't know like you do about the web quality or what is expected of a website. So you're the, the guardian of the web quality, you're the guardian of the user experience for your visitors, and um, you need to impress upon the client that it's really important to think of a website as a, uh, a complete entity. You are not designing only pages, you are designing pages inside a full website, otherwise, after two years, it became a complete anarchy where every page of the website was different and it was almost impossible for, the, for every user that uh, was coming to the website to understand what was going on. 
uh, there were a lot of similar components that were reused in different contexts, and so when you were browsing the website, you didn't really know what the page was about, how it was linked between uh, different sections of the website, and also the client was happy uh, about how they were building the website. Basically, uh, the visitors were not staying on the website, they were, not they were not browsing the website, and they didn't know how to, or base to, um, to use the feature of the website. So the website was good for the editor, but was not working as a way to, um, um, to interest visitors, as a way to get clients to, for example, to sign for the newsletter, or to apply for a job at Airbus, or things like that. So basic feature that they had in mind were just not working. Um, um, at the time, a decision was made and the, the teams that were managing the project changed completely and they decided to rework everything and they went from a company that were not a Drupal specialist to hire specialists for each part of the website. So they hired a Drupal specialist for the backend and uh, uh, everything related to Drupal. They hired um, a consultant for the UX as well. So a dedicated company that was doing uh, the UX. They hired a good front-end developer, which was something that was missing at the, first of the, at the start of the project. And um, so it was not a, a small decision because that meant as a project manager, they needed to uh, coordinate a lot of teams, a lot of people. They needed to ensure that they work well together, which is something that is sometimes hard to do when different companies are involved that may eventually be com um, competitors. Um, and for this project, it was a, a little bit of a success story and um, it's something that we are all proud today that even as competitors, we managed to work together very well to change the way the website was built. So we, we started the new version of the project. So that was um, two years ago after the website has been online for two years. And we started with a UX audit, uh, both for back office and front office. The, um, the UX consultant was doing the audit for the front office and as a Drupal dev, uh, I was doing, uh, I've been doing the audit for the back office. So basically what I've uh, been doing is uh, ask a content editor to create uh, some content while I was uh, seeing how they use the browser and trying with my Drupal background to think how we could do better and how we could transform their, their content editing experience by um, trying to just adapt uh, a little bit the back office. We didn't want to rebuild the whole back office uh, because we, we decided from the start that uh, we would completely rebuild the front office and that was enough of a big project. So uh, we tried to, um, to just uh, at least make their experience better without, in, uh, without investing too much money into the, the back office. And another lesson here is, uh, as we, we knew that uh, the, the front office redesign would, t would take some time, uh, when I say some time, I'm, I mean something like two years, three years, you need to still deliver value to your customer. And so uh, immediately after we came on to the, the redesign, we started to make improvement to the back office. So the web editor were uh, seeing that we, we were doing a good thing um, to build trust inside our client and so they could um, in return trust us to do a good redesign and so accept to wait a bit for what would be the new Airbus um, front office. Um, I feel Drupal is a really good tool to deliver value early. Uh, um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the Pareto principle or the 80-20 rule. How many in the room? Okay, so a few. So basically, the, uh, this principle is that 80% uh, of the value of the project will, will take something like 20% of the time and the, the rest of the time will be um, dedicated to the last 20%. And Drupal is a really good tool to build the 80% really fast, 
uh, we have a lot of module like views that allows you to start bridging some, some screen really fast and you can then uh, iterate on the screen and add filter a little by little or um, adjust every bit of content um, for the client needs, but you will be able to produce value really fast. And it's something that um, I feel that way that Drupal is especially adapted to agile project where you need to bring value as fast as possible. So what did we do for the quick wins in the back office? Um, the first thing we did was change the administration team. So we went uh, from Claro, which is already good, to Jean, just to bring some kind of modern back office for the um, content editor. So uh, it's, uh, it's really fast to do. You just need to enable a team. And then we started to do a little improvement to the back office. Um, as uh, I, I talked a bit earlier about the flexible page, which was, uh, which was so flexible that every component had tons of options, which were really hard for the content editor to, to grasp. And so what we did was use the field group module to start uh, organizing and um, prioritizing some fields on the blocks so that the content editor could see the, the most important uh, fields to fill, and then we, we try to hide all the little options only for advanced uh, contributor or some people that were maybe more familiar with Drupal. So we, we tried to give them a, a back office where uh, creating content was fast, and then tuning and editing uh, the content took a little bit more of time, but at least the most of the content editor would do their job uh, a lot faster than before. Um, something that is not, um, not really used on Drupal project, I feel, is the help text that you can fill on the back office form. So uh, for those that do, do not know, below each field you can, add, you can add an help text and on a lot of projects these help texts are just never used and in the context that we were, uh, meaning having a lot of different websites, a lot of different people working on the website, sometimes subcontractors filling the content, having help text to clarify what image format we wanted or how the text would be used in the front end clearly helped uh, the web editor to produce their content uh, and um, so that it better suits uh, their needs. So uh, it's a small feature that is directly built into Drupal core and I feel it's not enough used uh, nowadays, so on big project, you should really think about how you approach your back office and you should always dedicate time to, um, to ensure that um, you, you make a better back office uh, for your content editors. Um, um, and the last thing we did was to use uh, some, some different widgets, for, the, for example, for the entity reference or for the taxonomy selections. There are lots of dynamic widgets on the community, so Ajax loading uh, on the taxonomy, um, JavaScript trees, if you have a lot of terms, things like that, and um, that in turn contributed to make uh, really the back office better while people were waiting for the new redesign. Um, so about the redesign, it, the, the mockups have been done by the UX consultant and they try to focus uh, not only on um, recreating the components that were used on the website with a um, um, better design, but what they proposed at the time was having different templates. So instead of using a big flexible page that could accommodate every content, they, uh, they proposed to have a dedicated templates for, for, for example, for a, an event content type, a product content type, a service content type, thing like that, where instead of using every component available on the website, uh, you could only choose five or six of these components, but in return, that would mean that every page of this content type would be similar to the other. And also, it appears that it limits a bit the possibilities of the web editors in fine, the website is a lot better because every page of the same content type is similar and so the visitor really better understand um, how the website is about or how to use the, the content and the pages. And I feel it's the, it's the factor that is the, the most beneficial for the website as a whole uh, in, because it ensures web quality and 
uh, less uh, cognitive burden for the visitor. In return, as you have a lot less components on the website uh, for each content type, it's easier for the web editor to choose the one uh, that will do the most impact comparing to what they need. So basically here what I'm saying is maybe sometimes you need to limit the option of your content editor just to ensure a better quality for your website. So here to, to talk a little bit about page building, um, I admit I, I was not, um, I didn't think there would be so many devs in these sessions, that's why the session is not that technical, but uh, f feel free to ask a question at the end and I'll be happy to answer. Uh, what I can say is when the website started, only a paragraph and layout builder were considered because at the time the Gutenberg initiative was not, uh, I would say, mature enough. So it was mainly a decision between using paragraph, which was the maybe the, the historic solution or at least something that was coming from Drupal 7, while layout builder was something more, uh, more recent. Uh, maybe with less of an ecosystem at the time, but as it was in core, we chose to go with layout builder at the time, just because um, I feel that it's most of the time better to use uh, something that is built into core because that ensures the community will be able to standardize into something. Um, I don't think uh, going with paragraph would have been an error, but it, it was just a choice at the time to use layout builder. Again, what I want to encourage you is to rely on the community. So I feel if you're doing your website using almost only uh, Drupal core and doing uh, everything by hand, you miss a lot of what the community has to offer. Uh, because uh, if you have followed the session or the talk yesterday, a lot of community is currently standardizing um, on layout builder and creating a lot of additional community modules that can really enhance the solution. And so really um, I think what makes Drupal great is to have such a big community that is always creating new features and new modules that you can add to your website. That's what we did in the redesign. So basically uh, we went from only using Layout Builder to use Layout Builder with a lot of additional modules. So I won't list them entirely here, but mainly layout builder restriction, layout builder lock. But basically, if you want to see what we did or to reproduce what we did, there is a, a core issue uh, currently regarding the layout builder improvement. And uh, um, everything that we did is, um, is in the issues that are on this issue. So basically, uh, I was quite happy to see, or oh, happy, I don't know if it's the right word, but at least uh, it showed me that the whole community has more or less the same needs that we, well, that we had in Airbus, and the whole community is trying to address so, the, the current uh, UX issues on Layout Builder, but the restrictions as well, that can be an issue for a content editor because sometimes you need to limit their creativity. Uh, I don't know if it's a specificity of our team, but if we give them options, they will use them to the fullest of their potential and try to really destroy the website. So um, limiting uh, their creativity was in fact the, the way to ensure the, the quality of the website in the end. Um, so uh, I really encourage you to see this issue because it makes me really uh, happy for the future of what Layout Builder will bring to the community. Uh, relying upon the community is for me not enough and I think um, what another thing that made Drupal great is that a lot of people in the community are actually contributing and so I would encourage you as well uh, on your project to uh, not only use the module but be part of the community. You, uh, you are obviously since you are here today but really create issue when you find bugs. Um, sometimes a, a thing that is mainly uh, underestimated is that project manager can contribute a lot to Drupal because module maintainer don't have uh, much time and so just closing issue by saying this is a duplicate of this one or this one is more major, major than this one or thing like that can really help uh, module maintainer. 
and um, I, I've done them sometimes on some module, just uh, triaging some of the, of the issue makes the developer able to uh, release something, a new version early or thing like that. So everybody can, can contribute something to the community. So um, I would really encourage you to do that. Um, I, I will try not to evangelize too much, but basically uh, as the community uh, and especially when using Drupal, you can go faster and further. Uh, so really use that. But the session was about uh, can Drupal do page builder as well as CMS? And I feel yet that yes, we can. There are today lots of modules to do that. But the thing is, I really don't think you should. Um, it's not the main function of Drupal. Uh, Drupal is a CMS before everything else. So you can do page builder, but thinking of Drupal as a page builder and trying to create every page of your website uh, with a page builder is to me currently still much um, of a burden. You, you will need to do a lot of custom code. You will need to adjust a lot of things and it may not create in the end the developer experience you want in your team. So yes, it's possible, but it's not easy and it, it may be in the future, but right now it's still not ready to do that. Um, and I hope you have a lot of questions. So I don't see any Q&A on the live, but if you have any questions, there is a mic uh, in the middle of the room that you can take in. It can be more dev related than what I've talked about. If you have a really precise question about how we build a solution or thing like that, uh, I will do my best to answer it. And if you don't have any question, I think the food will be ready soon, so. Yeah. Is it on? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so when you had. Uh, no, it, it, it should be on, but. Yeah, maybe. Is it on? No. No. Hello? No? Yeah. Yeah, OK. So how, how many components, like how for the, for the editors? Because we often, like, when we use the layout builder and and go from design to you know, finished website, one of the quest like there's a tendency to always add extra options and you know. Um, um, so the first version of the website had uh, something like 20 components. Okay. Um, but even on these 20 components, I feel uh, something like five of them uh, almost were the same, just with a different front end rendering. So. Uh, they were only basically teaser to another content, but with a different uh, layout or something like that. Um, and what we tried to do on the redesign was create only one component when we wanted to have a specific goal in mind. So for example, advertise another page or something like that. So, uh, we created only one component, but by building upon uh, the UI patterns uh, module, we try to create variants, so um, front-end variants of the same components. So nowadays we have a lot less uh, functional components, but with different front-end rendering that allows almost the same flexibility, but with a very uh, simple um, data model and uh, with a very simple contribution. So basically we try to keep the feature, but really have a cleaner UX and a better content editing. I hear you, you went for having uh, Yeah, 20 components to um, nowadays, we are more uh, on something like between 10 and 12. Yeah, and then with options on them to tweak a bit. Yeah, on but them. only, um, so not um, functional options, but uh, only design options. Whereas before we had uh, as well functional options or things like that, so. Um, but uh, you, you know the clients, uh, we will probably have something like 20 components in a year or so. Uh, the website will, will never be done, but uh, yeah. Yes? Yes? Yeah. Uh, yeah, thanks. Um, so you said that uh, they used to have a different uh, CMS before and they went to Drupal. 
but are they using Drupal like with structured content or is it only page building that they do? Um, so currently the, the structured content is mainly for the, um, for the news or press release or uh, something really editorial. Almost every, every content that is not a fully editorial content is a page building. So it's, um, I'm not really happy about that. Uh, <laughs> and for each new content, we try to ensure, or we try to push for a more structured approach. So for example, we recently built the event content type and we try to push for a lot of structured approach, but on almost every uh, piece of content, there is at least a, a flexible part. So the, the beginning of the content type is a structured content and there is a little uh, layout builder at the end to accommodate for more options for the page. Right, and you said that uh, Drupal uh, shouldn't be used this way, uh, but that's what many people want. <laughs> yeah. Um, so how do you feel about that? Like, I mean, uh, it's not that Drupal really shouldn't be used this way, but when you use Drupal this way, you lose the structure part and you lose the reusability. So you can reuse uh, blocks or sections inside the layout builder, but you, you lose the entity reference, you lose the views, you lose uh, what's in my mind uh, makes Drupal um, more powerful or easier to use than some other product. And sometimes when I see people using only the layout builder part, I'm wondering if uh, they shouldn't have choose another product to do that. So I'm wondering, in, in that case, for the, the first version of the website, I'm really wondering why they chose Drupal. Yeah, uh, that was my other question. Like. Okay, so I know why they chose Drupal. So, yeah. uh, uh, and I feel it's because uh, Acquia has a really great commercial. So uh. <laughs> for, for big client, I think it's the main reason. But I don't think the... The client realized the trade-off or what they were, why they were choosing Drupal from. Makes sense. Thanks. Yeah. Other questions? Then bon appétit. <laughs>